All right, assault rifles, the most widely used weapons in Tarkov. There really isn't anything special about them as a weapon class, so let's just dive right into it. The AK-74 is the standard that every other assault rifle is compared to. It's inexpensive, has easily accessible ammo, and is easy to mod into a usable configuration. As a result, it is a very common choice in the early and mid-wipes, making it difficult to pin down a general stereotype. It's arguably one of the weaker assault rifles in the late game, so if someone is using a meta build, they just really like Soviet firearms. The AK-74, but smaller, drippier, and literally just better in almost every single way. Why is it so good? If someone is using this, they're either doing Punisher Part 3, or have realized that it is literally the best budget weapon in the game. This dude is probably just a hipster. It does have some merit as M856A1 is unlocked at Peacekeeper 2, so it can serve as a very solid early game rifle. That being said, 545BT is apparently as common as loose change and can be found all over the floor in Tarkov, making it equally as accessible. As a result, most people who use the AK-101 do so because of its novelty as a 556. That being said, it's still really damn good. The exact same thing as the AK-101, except this one is short. Either you had one in your stash, or you remember when this thing was one of the best weapons in the game. Long ago, before the Mutant and RD-704, this thing had equal to, if not better, stats than the AKM. Ever since the 308 muzzle adapter was added, though, it's rarely used. If someone is using it, they either had one in their stash, or they're just taking a trip down nostalgia lane. Unlike the AK-103, this thing was never widely used. It's a pretty good weapon, and its short length means it's nutty in close quarters like dorms. Despite this, it's overlooked by a majority of the player base. If found in someone's inventory, there is a 90% chance it looks like this, and was pulled off a raider about 5 minutes ago. Oh boy, the wannabe Krinkov. This thing used to be a solid budget weapon, but nowadays it's just completely outshined by literally every other 545 AK. It's not even good for its short length like the AK-104, because the AKS-74U just exists and is vastly superior and cheaper. If someone is using this, they are either new or just had one in their stash. We really needed another AK? <laughs> Someone wanted to rock a suppressed 545 AK that didn't suck or cost over 180,000 rubles. It's good, even as a stock weapon, so it's relatively common to find on Timmy's, especially in the early wipe when they just find one. Overall, it's a solid addition to the vast AK lineup. That being said, people who like this thing exaggerate its superiority. Is it better than the AK-74? Yeah, sure, maybe. Is it a god-tier metal weapon? No. No. Ah, the rugged AKM. A solid weapon throughout most of Tarkov's history. People who use this live by the saying of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why use all this fancy new shit when the good old AKM still kicks ass? 
AKMs are like Toyotas from the 80s. Robust, reliable, and will probably end up in the Middle East at some point. You're doing Punisher Part 1 and are tired of bringing in decent kits, so you just slap a PSO scope on this and call it a day. I've never seen it used otherwise. There are three reasons people intentionally buy an N-Variant AK. They wanted to use the OKP-7 with an actually good reticle, they wanted to use a PSO sight, or they have a semi-obsessive knowledge with guns and buy a dovetail Picatinny rail because the dust cover mounted Picatinny has a tendency to lose zero. They definitely watch either Zach Hazard, Brandon Herrera, or both. A solid weapon that is never bought. The RPK gets lost in the pile of AKs that are already in the game. In addition, the poor implementation of overheating and jamming means that it has no significant advantage, or even a difference, to a standard AK-74. If someone has it, they'll run it. If they don't have it, they're not gonna buy it. Literally everyone uses this thing. This this is the default loadout option. Like, there are so many different people who use it that it's literally impossible to name a general stereotype. You got you got the COD Warzone meta, you got the Mogadishu special, you got the totally an M16, and many, many more. Yeah, it's it's the M4. Everyone uses it. The HK416 is the M4, but for turbo sweats. We're talking 50% sodium in their blood, Red Bull IV, altered a landmark with candles type shit. People who use it are willing to shell out hundreds of thousands of rubles for 50 more rounds per minute and four less recoil. Is it better? Sure. Are there severely diminishing returns on your investment? Yes. You played Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare and fell in love with this thing. That or you're an HK fanboy. That is all. People who use this just really like the AUG. In real life, I mean, not in Tarkov. It's better now, but its horizontal recoil is still pretty rough, making it inferior to the MDR in most ways. That being said, the AUG is cooler, so some people will use it. If someone is using the AUG A1 variant with the standard sight, then they have ascended beyond our mortal needs for good weapons and have entered the plane of maximum aesthetic. It's the early wipe, and these things are changing hands like Pokemon cards. The MDR is the well-rounded 5.56 weapon. It's not too expensive, not too hard to mod, and not too hard to get. People who use it know it's not going to carry them, but it also won't be the reason they died. Unless it jams twice on them like it did for me. The turbo sweat weapon, but people who use it are less pretentious than the HK416 users. A solid package with good ergo, decent recoil, all crammed into a smaller gun that you can take anywhere. It just works. The 762 MDR, but for people who are mentally unstable. If someone is using this thing on semi-auto, they're actually trying to use it as an effective weapon. They also probably have a suppressor. 
This is the wrong way to use it. The correct way is to slap it into full auto without a suppressor and barrel stuff literally everything you come across. The mighty roar and your faith in Daka will carry you through that fight. People who use the mutant long for the days when it was so brokenly overpowered that Tarkov was just not fun to play. Actually, scratch that. It, it wasn't overpowered. Every other gun in the game was just terrible for some reason. Like, literally, this thing had better recoil than a meta HK. Those were not good days. Nowadays, it's still pretty good, but not nearly as common. People who use it are strictly utilitarian turbo sweats, and they don't give a rat's ass about aesthetics. Let's be completely honest, the Meta Mutant is... it's pretty damn ugly. This thing is really underrated. It really is just the M4's more aggressive and deranged cousin. Not many people remember that this thing is in the game until some dude is shoving the barrel into their face. As this weapon struggles at range, NCX users tend to be really aggressive playing to their close range strengths. They will also constantly be talking about the MCX and how it's really good and how other people should try it and how it's really underrated, you know. People who use this do so primarily out of loyalty to the incredible weapon that it once was. I remember taking this thing into labs all those wipes ago and just having a damn good time. It's pretty good again, but its ammo and magazines are really expensive now. Despite its performance, the price is just too high to justify running this thing for most people. As a result, everyone who still runs it has likely been doing so for a while. They also hate basically every other meta weapon user. Other people complaining caused the nerf of their beloved AS Val in the first place when it probably didn't deserve a nerf. The close range weapon was good at close range. Go figure. Semi-questionable memes aside, the SA-58 is another weapon that used to be loved by basically everyone before being nerfed so far into the ground that it hasn't seen the light of day since. This wipe could see its return though, as its recoil is finally back to a not batshit insane level, and it might be usable. The legendary juice cannon may finally make a comeback. Also, for some reason, people like to mod this thing into a compact DMR. I'm not sure why, but if it works, it works. This was the replacement for the SA-58 back when it was completely sucking ass. Now that they're on pretty equal footing, it's going to come down to aesthetics, price, and personal preference on which one is used. Throw this into the bin with all the other, yeah, it's pretty good, so people use it. I'm noticing now that a lot of AR stereotypes are just, it's good. Yeah. That being said, you can tell a few things about a person based on how it's modded. If it's got the long barrel and any suppressor ever, they tend to lean more towards a sweat. If they have a short barrel and a suppressor that matches color with their scar, then they are more aesthetics focused. Other than that, it good, yeah. All right, the final stereotypes video done. For weapons, that is. I've considered doing helmet, armor, or hat stereotypes, but then I'd really be copying Soundsmith. But if you wanna see that, be sure to let me know and I'll give it a consideration. 
Anyways, thank you so much for watching or listening, especially all the way to the end, and uh, I hope you enjoyed.